When I imagine the perfect daily driver, I think enough space for the fam, good looks, at least 300 brake horsepower, a sporty drive and fuel economy that doesn't break the bank. This three-year-old Audi S4 might just be one of the best cars you can buy to date. But let me explain why. My name's Tom and you're watching Peregrine Cars. Let's go. The engine, 3 litres, 354 brake horsepower and 500 newton metres of torque. This for me is that sweet spot. Usable power within the confines of the law. 0-60 in 4.7 seconds is plenty quick enough. But what about the 30-70 to 70 sprint? Let's find out. So how did we do on the 30-70 to 70 sprint then? Well, predictably, we did slightly better than the Audi S3 and quite a bit worse than the Audi RS5. No surprises there then. What that does mean though, is it puts it third on the leaderboard, which means this understated Avant is faster than the A45. As mentioned in previous videos, this interior is as close to perfect as I think you can get. Form and function are very hard things to balance in any product, but this S4 blends them together seamlessly. No touchscreens, yet tech is plentiful. Wonderfully knurled switches with Audi's usual super satisfying clickiness fall to hand so easily you almost never have to take your eyes off the road. The HVAC controls display the temperature in the dial and allow you to change further options via the capacitive buttons. There's then the air blade which releases high volumes of air whilst maintaining a whisper quiet cabin. The leather sports seats are some of the best I've sat in. They also come with a massage function that is surprisingly much more than just a gimmick. Of course, there's then the well-renowned virtual cockpit. This is my favourite version, traditional clockwise dial amid the centre, map on the left and time on the right. Audi, please bring back this style. There's no need for any other design. Then for some reason, cup holders are a feature that often get overlooked in a car but the ones in this car are absolutely spot on. Big enough for large bottles, but grippy enough for the smaller ones. You can even store your key in them. Coming to the rear, it actually maintains the proper quality and has ample room for two adults up to about six foot two. Amenities include an armrest, your own climate control, and two cup hot, oh wait, yeah, you have to pay extra for them. Thankfully, you still get large door bins though. Of course, the boot is electrically powered and it actually has enough space to live in. Like, literally, you could put a mattress in here. You have 505 litres with the seats up and over 1,500 with the seats down. Plenty of room for panic buying all the turkeys this Christmas then. Okie dokie, let's get on the road so I can show you why this is one of the best cars you can buy. As usual, we're gonna start off round town, then move on to the motorway, and then finally do some twisty road driving. First impressions though, is that this Audi S4 does the daily commute absolutely wonderfully. The steering is so light, it's pretty similar to the BMW X6 we reviewed a while ago. And it just means getting in the car and going to work is such an easy task. We're on the passive damper setup for this car, you can get adaptive dampers. Um, and I would say they're worth it depending on what your driving style is. But the passive damper setup is kind of in between comfort and sports in the adaptive damper setup. So you've got plenty of control, but it's still just about compliant enough that it doesn't rock you about too much. In terms of parking, this Audi S4 is actually pretty easy. There's plenty of steering lock. And although this is not a really small car, it is still small enough to be able to be manoeuvred around in small spaces. As standard, I'm pretty sure you don't actually get anything. You might get parking sensors as standard, but you certainly don't get a reverse camera because this car doesn't have one. And to be honest, because there's quite a good view out the back window, you don't really need it. 
Now, because this is an S4, it means you get the ZF 8-speed transmission. So coming out of those little gaps in junctions is really easy. There's also pretty much all the torque from the engine at just 1,450 RPM. So it gives you a pretty smooth driving experience. It almost feels electric. Right, let's reset the trip computer so we can see what MPG we get on the motorway. Of course, the less times you have to fill up, the better in this kind of car. It's not so much about MPG, just more not having to stop at a petrol station every 200 miles. Before we get on the motorway, let's have a look at how this S4 can handle a roundabout. I'm going to put the car into dynamic, and because we don't have many options, it's basically just going to drop a gear, put the gearbox in sports, make the steering heavier, and make the throttle a bit more responsive. I can go into manual, and I've actually got the traction in sport as well, so it will give me a bit of slip. does really well. I don't know if it's because it's got more weight over the rear axle. It seems to squat down in the rear and you can feel what the rear is doing a bit more than that RS5 that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. For now we're going to go into efficiency mode and see what MPG we can get on motorway. So what's this Audi S4 like in terms of refinement? Well Audis are always very good at getting rid of road and wind noise. But the S cars actually come with something called acoustic glass, and what this does is get rid of pretty much all the wind noise altogether. And it means doing long journeys on the motorways is an absolute pleasure. The passive damper setup is also pretty well judged for British motorways. Really big bumps you can feel, but that's the same with pretty much any car. But all the small undulations in the road are ironed out really nicely. The steering also likes to stay dead straight, it doesn't follow any tram lines in the road. I know BMW m light cars actually do that quite a lot. So this is definitely the car you'd want for a longer journey. In terms of visibility, well, it's really good. Nothing to complain about. B pillars are as small as they need to be. A pillars are also really thin and they're kind of like a weird shape so you can see round them in most cases. There's also curved bits of glass on the wing mirror so you can actually see in your blind spot without sort of turning your head around. But one of the best things about this S4 in any scenario really is just the drivability. We're in efficiency mode now and say you want to give it a little bit of acceleration, you just give it half throttle and the gearbox responds so well. It just means you're not having to wait for the power to come in. Then in terms of interior quality, it is up there with some of the best cars on the market. You've got soft touch materials on the door cards, pretty much all the way down. You've got stitch leather uh, as well on the armrest. And then you've got squidgy material on the dash all the way across. Then you've got this really nice brushed aluminium trim, which is actually one of my favourite types. I prefer this over carbon fibre, to be honest. And then lower down you do have plastics, but the plastics they do use are of a much higher quality than that of BMW or Mercedes. So whilst there may not be as much leather, it's visually consistent. And somehow it makes you feel less stressed when you're driving it. It's a bit of a weird one. The virtual cockpit, as I mentioned in the intro, is absolutely on point with its design. You've got this favourites button on the steering wheel, and it means you can change your radio, drive mode, set a destination with your sat-nav. And for some reason in later Audi models, they got rid of this, and I can't think why. Then the next best thing in the interior of this S4 are the seats. Of course they're made with Audi's finest leather, but you can adjust the pitch of the base, you've got a little extendable bit for your thigh so you can get even more thigh support, and then you can actually adjust the bolsters and the lumbar support. There's a little switch on the side of the seat and it allows you to tighten them up or slacken them off. Obviously you want to tighten them up when you're on a B road doing some twisty road driving, but then you can sit on what feels like a sofa when you're on the motorway. One other thing I want to mention is when you're in efficiency mode, the car will actually coast if you come off the throttle, and it'll even do that when you've got the cruise control on. So you get the absolute best possible MPG you can out of this car. They say you should get about 38 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, which is quite a lot for a powerful V6. But if you watched our RS5 review last week, which I'll put a link up to here, you'll have seen that we actually got 42 miles per gallon in that car. So it will be interesting to see if we can match that figure in this. In terms of spec, sadly this car doesn't have the options that I think you should get. 
And if I could only pick three options for this car, it would be the Bang & Olufsen sound system. The standard stereo is good, but when you turn it all the way up, it's just not quite loud enough for my liking. The bass, the mids, the highs are still all really clear though. The panoramic roof for this car is also an absolute must. This car doesn't have it, and if you have rear passengers, it does make them feel quite closed in, especially when you've got tinted rear windows. And the other thing would actually be the extended interior lighting package. As standard, you just get lights in the door cards and then in the cup holders, but you can't change the color of the ones in the cup holders, whereas the extended interior lighting package, you can change it to pretty much any color you want to within the RGB range, and it makes it look like an absolute spaceship at night. So let's now talk about one of the things journalists don't talk about when they're looking at brand new cars. Of course, this isn't a new car. This car is nearly four years old now, and being an Audi, you expect it to have a certain level of quality over time. And thankfully, this Audi is still completely rattle-free, and there's no minor niggles with software that I can see. Um, and the wear on the interior is actually pretty good. I know sometimes on the lower bolsters of the seat you can get some folds in the leather. But look over there, you can actually see some down there now. But that is typical of pretty much any car, and it also depends on who's sitting in it as well. But overall, everything still looks fresh, and the tech still looks up to date. The virtual cockpit is actually something called a TFT display. And these are known to actually last more than 20 years before they break. So I wouldn't worry about any reliability issues in the tachometer department. Coming off the motorway then, we basically matched the Audi RS5's figure that we did last week. In fact, we literally did. But the figure is still going up, so I reckon if you drove very slowly, say you were going up to Scotland or something and you just wanted to chill out, you could probably get about 44 mpg out of this car which means you could do roughly 600 miles on one tank of fuel. So what's this Audi S4 like when you come to a British B road? Let's find out. So for the twisty roads, I put the car into dynamic and I've got the stability control off. a lot of feel. This passive damper setup really helps the car move along. It's very predictable what the car is going to do. We're on Conti Sport Contact 6s and it feels like the front and the rear break away pretty much at the same time actually. Audis are always renowned to understeer but this one feels pretty neutral. Doesn't really want to oversteer that much though. Just feels like a refined tool. Let's see if we can get some sound through this bit here. You get these sort of burbles. And then on the up ships you get a, a little rasp from the exhaust. Anyway, I'm gonna put those windows up now because it is freezing. I think in dynamic you get a little bit of pumped in fake noise as well. It's not a lot though. But one of my favourite ways to drive this car is actually in dynamic and just using the paddles. The ZF8 speed is just about responsive enough that it's fun to use. But Audis are always really good at coming around these tight corners and then you just use that quattro system to blast you out of them. Bump on the way back. Yep, get a nice amount of air. Suspension deals with it really well, actually. And the fact is, an Avant has the same amount of space as an SUV, but because it's lower down, it's just going to handle better. It doesn't really matter what you do to the SUV, this will be the better handling car. And of course, the other good thing about this Audi S4 is you can use it in any weather. In fact, the rainier it gets, the better it is to drive. It's 
pretty amazing how solid this Audi S4 feels considering the amount of miles it's done. Feels like it's just been broken in, really. So what's my overall verdict then? Is this the best daily driver you can buy? Well, of course, there's going to be more expensive, slightly better cars. But this as a package and as a whole is probably the best thing you can buy for UK roads. As a package, I would say it's either this car or something like an M340i xDrive. And keep in mind, although you can buy something like an RS6, which you might think, oh, that's going to be so much better on a daily basis. I would say back to you that you're not going to get as good a fuel economy and the car's actually quite big. So if you are driving around a city, it means it's harder to park and you're going to have to drive past a lot of smaller spaces that you could have otherwise parked in if you were driving this. And this still has a massive boot, big enough for 99% of things, and it's still got enough room for four adults. It can actually fit five, but not that comfortably. And as I mentioned in the intro, the power this car has is absolutely spot on. I don't think you need any more power than this in the UK. Because otherwise, as soon as you put your foot down, you're doing the speed limit. Whereas in this, you can actually have a little bit of fun with it. Plus again, because of its size on a B road, you can move it around in the lane. You're not having to stick to the center of the lane like you're on train tracks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, give it a like, and why not subscribe to our channel? Not only will you be able to see more videos like this one, you'll also be able to see all the cars we have for sale, including this one. Anyway, my name's been Tom, and you've been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.